Believe me, I have the power to make peace with the entire world, so that no one would quarrel with me. But what can I do when there are certain heavenly rungs which can only be attained by means of conflict? The more water you pour around the tree, the more it grows. How could there not be opposition to me, seeing as I am traveling a new path which no man has ever traveled before? It is a very old path, in fact, and yet it is completely new. So what if they drive me away from here, too? No matter where I go, no matter where I step, I always put things right. Once, before my journey to Berdichov, I assembled a minion of ten men, and I argued in their presence with the evil one. From that time on, whenever I want to accomplish anything, the evil one gives himself free reign to travel the length and breadth of the universe to ruin it. And you want to know something? I even allow myself to be insulted in all sorts of ways. I manipulate them, so they will insult me. For it will be impossible for me to journey to the Holy Land without these degradations. This is because of all the obstacles waiting for me on the way. Pogroms, diseases, Napoleon's navy and the Sultan's navy, both of them sitting there in the ocean near the Holy Land, not to mention the storms and pirates at sea. One who reaches for greatness must first suffer smallness. Since reaching the Holy Land is the greatest greatness, the highest purification, therefore to attain it one must first descend into the greatest defilement. Only in this way can we deceive the accusing forces who would claim we are trying to rise beyond that place which is proper for a human being. We fool them with the guise of self-humiliation. Well, my friends, now I want to tell you a story. Why a story? Because in generations so far from God, the only remedy left is to present the secrets of the Torah, even the greatest of them, in the form of stories. You should know that the tales of the tzaddikim are a very great thing. Through these tales, the heart is aroused and enraptured with the most powerful longing for God. So, here is my story. It is called the story of the lost princess. Once upon a time, there was a king. The king had six sons and one daughter. Especially the daughter he held in great esteem. He loved her very much and he spent much time with her. Now I know the clever ones among you already are doing some arithmetic. Six plus one equals seven. Ah, this must be another story about Shabbos or about the seven days of creation. Well, my friends, I want to tell you something. Don't jump so fast to conclusions. First of all, just sit back and enjoy the story. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just that this particular story, uh, well, it's not exactly what you might expect. One day, while the king was in the company of his daughter, that is to say, the daughter he liked very much, for some reason or other, the king got very angry and a word escaped him. Hey, the evil one, take you away! That's what he said. May the evil one take you away. That night, the daughter of the king went into her chamber and, would you believe it, in the morning, nobody could find her at all. She was gone, disappeared. The king was very unhappy indeed, and he went to look for her everywhere, but to no avail. Then the prime minister, seeing how miserable the king was, stood up and asked to be given a servant, a horse, and some money for expenses so that he could go look for the missing princess. His request was granted, and he set out on his way. He searched for her a very long time. Once he was in a desert, and there he noticed a pathway going off to one side. He said to himself, Since I have traveled such a long time in the desert, and I cannot find her, let me follow this path to the side. Perhaps I will reach some settlement. So he walked a long time on this path, till he saw a castle with many soldiers standing around it in military parade formations. The castle was very beautiful. He was afraid of the soldiers, and he said to himself, Perhaps they will not let me in. He decided to try. So he left his horse and walked to the castle. He was allowed in and not molested in any way. He went from room to room with no trouble at all. Finally, he came to the throne room. There he saw the king himself sitting on his throne, with many soldiers on guard on all sides. Musicians were playing, and it was all very beautiful. 
and neither the king nor anybody else asked him any questions. He sat down at a table and waited to see what would happen there. Soon the king ordered the queen to be brought in. Servants went to bring her, and there was a great clamor and great rejoicing. The musicians played, and the queen was brought in, and this was the lost princess.